Harvey, uh, let's start with you because you not only understand the law and politics and entertainment and the power of video, um, I'm wondering, as somebody who knows so much about all of those things, what went through your mind when you watched that very dramatic footage today? Well, I mean, what the way I absorbed it all was this way. Donald Trump, when you watch all of it, was the general of an attempt to overthrow the United States government. He was involved in the planning of it. He was involved in inciting it. And he was intimately involved in being able to stop it and consciously did not. And I think when you put all of that together, because for me, what I've always thought about January 6th was the most damning part. I mean, there's so many parts, but the most damning part is that Donald Trump watched this on TV with glee. Donald Trump is the president. He incited this and had an obligation to stop it and consciously decided not to do it. To me, Alex, I mean, I haven't heard this, but I feel it and I'm gonna say it. I think this goes way beyond impeachment and conviction. To me, Donald Trump committed treason. Treason is in the Constitution. It is, a, it is declaring war on the government. That is what those people did. They did it at his behest. And I think his order, when he's standing next to a guy, a congressman who says, go over there and kick some ass, and he is standing there smiling and doesn't stop it, he was the general. Not only do I think he should be prosecuted for treason, but under, oh, I looked at the law today, and there is something called felony murder in the federal government. There is a police officer who died. And if you, if somebody dies in the act of committing treason, that's also felony murder. I think Donald Trump did all of that. So uh, it, it is just unbelievable. This president became an enemy of the United States. Uh, real quickly, Harvey, I, I just want to follow up with you. Uh, how much does video make a difference? Because in the last impeachment, of course, we we're talking about a Ukrainian phone call with there's some notes of it. But in our culture, video is so important. You look at the success of things like Instagram and Snapchat, and, and we are visual people actually seeing it. How does that impact things? Well, hugely, but you know, we have seen video in dribs and, well, not dribs and drops. We've seen a lot of video, but it was never put together. You know, you see violence here, violence there, an attempt to kill Nancy Pelosi, hang Mike Pence. But all of those things were never, there was no connectivity to it. What the managers did, the House managers did, is that they had a, they, they had a narrative that they used video to bring it to life. And it was done about as effectively as I've ever seen, certainly in a court of law. It was almost stunning to me how how this was done, it was timed so perfectly that each time a manager spoke, somebody was on that switch and they immediately played the video. It always tracked. And when you watch the timeline buttressed with video, I mean, it's about as compelling as it can possibly be. Dr. True. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm curious uh, to ask uh, about the, the impeachment proceedings. When you look at the constitution it seems like taking a president out of office is the primary purpose of the impeachment clause but they're using it to ca cause somebody not to be able to gain office in the future uh, i'm wondering how how just declaring it so by a legislature makes it so yeah jason maybe take this one sure yeah. so it's not necessarily dr drew that the legislature is declaring that they can proceed they're looking at the text and the history of the constitution and the big point that, that I think is really interesting for people to know is that if you can't continue an impeachment after someone leaves office, then, Dr. Drew, there's a loophole in our Constitution, which is you can just immediately resign and then never face this new consequence of potentially being barred from office. And there's overwhelming evidence that the framers didn't want to allow that loophole. If someone was really dangerous, they couldn't just resign and then run for office again the next day. So that's why there's these two sanctions for impeachment, removal from office, plus barring from uh, holding further office. And they have to go together. And even if the person can is already removed from office, you have to constitutionally be able to get to that second sanction. Otherwise, you leave this enormous loophole, and right. Donald Trump really doesn't have an answer. And, and Jason, we have now up on the screen some other things that can happen. Because one of the questions is, 
it still looks like Donald Trump is probably going to be acquitted, despite everything that you and Harvey just said. So if he is acquitted, which means you don't get 17 Republicans behind this, what can happen to him? Walk us through this. Sure. Well, uh, we don't quite know. As you mentioned, Alex, they need 17 Republicans to join the 50 Democrats. They started with five Republicans that supported a procedural maneuver. They got six after opening arguments and for the constitutional moment. So maybe they'll continue to build. But even if Donald Trump is acquitted and he is not uh, prevented from holding office, as the, the screen said, there are additional sanctions, including censure, which uh, West Wing fans may remember that the fictional President Bartlett was censured for hiding his multiple sclerosis. It's just a non-binding statement that Congress views this as improper, but it could have weight come the next election or as a matter of his historical legacy. Yeah, so, there, so he still would be able to run for office even if he is uh, censured. Um, and bonus points whenever you can bring a West Wing um, reference to the table. We appreciate <laughs> Thank that. You. Yeah. All right, Harvey, one of the big questions, though, is politically, where do the Republicans go from here? One of those Republicans who seems like she's going to probably or at least open to the idea of voting for conviction is Lisa Murkowski of Alaska. Here's what she said after seeing those videos today. This whole scenario that has been laid out before us, I just, I don't see how uh, Donald Trump could be reelected to the presidency again. I just don't see that. Donald Trump is still widely popular with Republicans. He has a hold on Republican primary voters, which is why a lot of these Republican senators do not want to cross him. What do you make of the politics of this moment? Um, because Republican senators potentially put themselves in political peril if they cross Donald Trump. See, I think that Republican senators are, are not looking at the long game here because Donald, the, the hardcore supporters of Donald Trump at this point are not enough to get anybody elected. You need more Republicans, and I think a lot of them have bailed because of this. So I don't think that... That base, even though the base is important for re-election of these people, I don't think it's enough for them. And I don't think they're thinking that through enough. To me, the smartest guy in the House is Adam Kinzinger, because what Kinzinger is doing is he is saying, I will be your option. And he is setting himself up to um, try to bring the party somewhere toward the middle. And I, I just have a feeling that over time, these Congress people, and it's all, this is not about whether Donald Trump incited a riot. Of course he incited the riot. I mean, come on, of course he did. The, this is all about political survival. But I don't think they're looking at this correctly. Because if Donald Trump has 30% support within the Republican Party, hardcore support, I think that's about it. I think a lot of Republicans can't stomach this and of course, have bailed but, on it. But Harvey, that's why I think are so smart. If the Republicans lose their primary, then they can't go on anyways, and that's part of the, the problem here. Jason, I, I have a question in terms of uh, what's next here in this trial. So we know that we're going to hear more of the Democrats' case tomorrow, but on Friday, President Trump and his lawyers will be providing their case. What is their case? Break it down, and, and if you were representing Donald Trump, what would you argue? Well, it's hard. I mean, we should note, Alex, to start that Donald Trump's lawyers yesterday already admitted that they were bowled over by the House manager's case and had to rethink their entire case. So we don't really have a preview of the new argument. But he's, of course, going to make a free speech argument. He had a right to vet his ideas about what happened in the election. It's political speech. He didn't march with them. He didn't put weapons in their hand. And so his defense, Alex, is going to be, you know, I, I clean my hands. Look, they did it without me, and I wasn't a part of it. I was just saying my piece about what I thought happened in the election and whether or not his defense is going to try and relitigate some of these claims that have lost uniformly around the entire country in courts about election fraud. It's probably a bad idea, Alex, but he may go there. Mm. But I, one last comment. I, Harvey, I, I'm just sort of um, spinning over the words you're using. And I, I wonder, you know, one, it's one thing to say that somebody incited a riot, but overcharging the accused with treason and coups and these words, I think people push back on that a little bit. And maybe the overcharging might be one of the errors here, no? 
Well, my, the thing for me is I don't see it as overcharging. This was an act of war, yeah. guys. I mean, this was on the this was in the middle of certifying an election, and they took over the Capitol. We're trying to assassinate leaders. If that's not an act of war, tell me what is. I don't understand how this is not an act of war. Uh, I, I don't understand. All right, we're going to have to leave it there because we're out of time. We could literally talk about this all day, and there are plenty of networks that are. <laughs> Harvey Levin, uh, Jason Harrow, thank you very much. And uh, Thanks, guys. Uh, watch The West Wing if you want to learn more about that uh, censure as well, now on HBO Max. All right, still to come.